I'm getting a lot of questions about should I be using Firmer Motion or should I be using GSAB for my animations? And my answer is simple. Use the one you're best at. But wait, Ali, this is not good engineering. There has to be a clear winner between the both. All right, all right. In terms of functionality, I'd give it a draw. They both can do the job and they both can do similar things. Now, if you use React, which is declarative in its nature, then you'd want to use an animation library, which is also declarative and that's Framer Motion. But honestly, I'm not a fan of theory. So I'm just gonna build the same famous magnetic effect. I'll do it once using GSAP and once using Framer Motion. And from there, I'm sure you're gonna have a better understanding of the difference between the two. So I have a basic component here for the magnetic effect made with GSAP. And if I want to use this, basically I'll go inside of the page.js and I'll import that component and then I'll be able to simply wrap the SVG here inside of the component. And if I save that, I can see that my SVG here disappeared. And to make it reappear, I can go inside of the component here and extract the children from the props. And then I can simply give the children here and the SVG is back. And now the first thing I need to create is a reference. And that way I can grab the position and the size of the children. So here I create a reference using the use ref hook. And then what I could do is add the reference like this inside of a div wrapper. And this could work, but instead I can make it even cleaner by returning a react function called clone element and I'm just going to clone the children here and then I can add the ref that way and now I just use the use client directive here import the react library and that way we have our element that's returned the same way that it was before but now it has a reference on it and we can actually animate it so the first thing we need to do is create a mouse move event listener and we're going to attach that event to the reference and so we can start by creating a use effect put empty parameters and so it's going to get triggered once when the component mounts and then we can grab our reference and add an event listener and then I can create the mouse move function and the mouse leave function here and I'll grab the event as parameters and here I'll start with the mouse move event we can extract from it the client x and the client y from the event and then what I could do is a gsub2 and then I'll grab the reference I'll animate the x value to the client x and I can do the same thing for the y axis and now if I try this it's going very far and that's because the x and the y here are creating a translation that's why it's flying super far and so we cannot directly use the client x and the client y here so what i need to do here is extract the width the height the left and the top value from the reference and i can do that by calling the get bounding client rect function and here i'll have a value x that can be equal to the client x and now we want to subtract the current position of the element so we can do the client x minus the left and we'll do the same thing on the y-axis client y minus the top and here i'll change the values and if i save that we can try this out and we'll have something like this which looks a bit weird our mouse is not centered in the middle of the icon and that's because the left and the top position are positions of like the top left corner of the element it's not the center point so we can get the center point by additioning on the x-axis the width divided by two and on the y-axis we're gonna add the height divided by two and here I need to change my parentheses that way and I can save this and try this out and now this is starting to make some sense and now it's kind of being sticky for a long time so it's time to work on the mouse sleeve. Now the mouse sleeve is very simple. We're just gonna take the GSAP2 here and we're gonna reset the X and the Y transforms to zero. And now we have this nice magnetic effect. And here I'm just gonna wrap all of the other icons and we have something that looks like this, pretty good. But there's one way to make this more efficient. And that's because right now when we're moving the mouse, we are triggering a new GSAP.2 function. And that's not really efficient. They actually have a function for this kind of case to make everything more performant. And so what we'll do is use the quick to function from GSAP. And so here I'll predefine those animations and I'll have an x2 that will be equal to gsap.quick2 and here I'll target the ref, I'll target the x transform, I can have a duration of one second and I can have a certain ease and personally I found this ease to be fitting for this animation but you know you can play around and find the one that you like and then I'll just copy paste that and do the y2, the y transform and then here instead of using the gsap2 I'm just gonna delete that, delete it on the mouse sleeve and I'll just do x2 to the x and then y2 to the Y and then same thing for the mouse leave but I'm gonna do to zero and already that's a bit more clean and if I save that we have this nice effect here now it's a bit different than before because we have a different easing but it's good because we have something that's cleaner code wise and more performant as well and with that we are done with the GSAP animation and we're gonna do the same thing but with Framer Motion so here I have the Framer wrapper and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before I'm gonna import the Framer here and then I'll just wrap an SVG and then I also use the use client here and now we lost the SVG so like before I'll take the children from the props and I'll return the children here and now we're back normal and here I need to create a ref as well because I need the top the left position and the width and the height of the children so I have the same thing as before a reference 
reference here. And this time I'll give the reference to the div. And why am I not using the React clone element? It's because I want to have a div wrapper that's going to have the motion tag, which can then be animated. And now for frame motion, I'll have a state with the position of the mouse. So I can initialize it at x0 and y0. And here I'm going to add the event listeners directly inside of the JSX. I have the same thing, a mouse move and a mouse leave. And here I'm taking the same logic as the GSAP component because I need the center point. And so I'm just reusing the code. And here, instead of doing like a GSAP2, I'm simply going to set the state. So I'm going to do set position, the X and the Y. And on mouse leave, I'll also set the position, but now to zero. And then from the position state, I can extract the X and the Y. And I can animate the parent div here. And I'll animate the X and the Y. And we have something like this. Not too bad, looks pretty good. If we compare it with GSAP, it looks quite similar. It moves a bit more. And now if we want to tweak the animation, we can simply add a transition. And personally, I like the spring type transition. And I can define here a stiffness and I can do like 150. And so the stiffness is how sudden the movements are. So I'm going to do 150. Basically, the lower the number, the stiffer is going to be. And then I can have a damping. And the damping is how wiggly do you want the animation to be. If you put it at zero, it's just going to wiggle infinitely, which is not what we want here. And then I can set a certain mass. The default is one, so I'm going to do zero. 0.1 for this specific animation but you know you can play around and choose what you prefer and I have something like this very similar to the GSAP approach and so I'll do the same thing here copy paste and add it to all of the other SVGs and we have something like this we can see that it's almost the same. Now the GSAP has more of an elastic ending animation compared to the frame motion, but you could tweak that and have the same thing. And yeah, that's the difference. Frame motion, how much? 36 lines of code. GSAP, 39 lines of code. So very similar. And here you can really see the difference between like an imperative approach and a declarative approach. Like in the GSAP here, we're really telling React what to do precisely. Meanwhile, in frame motion, we're more telling what should happen. And so in frame motion, we are more like declaring what should happen. And in GSAP, we are more imperative imperatively telling do this. And so yeah, I hope you learned something from seeing the same animation made with two different libraries. If you learned something, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.